I say hi and you say whatever. Yep. Come on. All right, so let's go and ask Robert. Robert said he has an idea. Now, I'm going to pick on you a little bit, Robert, before we get into actually doing the parallelogram. Um, Robert, do you remember, do parallel parallelograms have opposite? All right, first of all, we need to identify. Is this a parallelogram? It's going to say yes, it's a parallelogram. Okay, now one thing we know about parallelograms is that opposite sides are equal. True or false? That was true, right? Opposite sides are equal. Now, this whole length is 8. So then, then can I now say that that whole length is 8? Yes. Yes? yes? So if this whole length is 8, and that whole length is 2, what does this whole length have to be? 6. Six. So can I now say that I can break this up into 6 and 2? Yes. Yes. All right? Now we need to go ahead and determine what the base is. So Justice, do you have any idea what the base would be? Oh, I'm sorry, because since we're on the parallelogram, we're trying to find the area. Error key, error equals base times height, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Justice, do you know what the base is for this trapezoid? No. Nope. You want to make an idea? Eight. Eight. Now, why would you say it'd be eight? Yes. For the base? base? Yes. No. Yeah. No, no, that's the height. No, it's the You're height in it, it wrong. Wrong. It's, it's the right way on. it's put up. Yeah. That would be the height. Now, Let's go and take a look at it. Uh, Wait, how do we get six? Here's the computer. Well, right. this this whole length, length is eight somewhere. Yeah. If that length was there, there's two. And that length would have to be six. So, ladies and gentlemen, if here's my, if here's my hands. Okay? What we have directly is something that's laying right there like this. It's kind of right now this tilt, right? Uh -huh. Now obviously when you have something on base, it needs to be on a flat surface, right? This would not stand very long, would it? Uh -huh. So I need to put it on its base like this, or its base like this. So if I put it on its base here, then you could say that three would be the base, right? But the problem is if three would be the base, it's kind of it's gonna be like a weird shape. But what we could do is rewrite it as eight as the base. Because remember, we talked about rotations, right? We can rotate, you know, figure 360, 270, 180. So I can easily rewrite this figure to look like this. Would you guys agree? No. And now I can say that that's 8, and that's 8. So yes, let's call the base 8. It's going to be much easier than calling the base 3, because then we don't know the height. So area equals base is height, or 8. But now I need to figure out if that's my height, I need to figure out what the height is. Or I'm sorry, if that's my base, now I need to figure out what the height is. So if we're calling this the base, the height is going to be directly from here to here. Now, do we have that length from here yeah. to there? No. Yeah. No. Well, 45, 45. Oh my god. There's no 45, 45. You don't know that. On the last triangle, I told you that, but here you don't, don't want to assume it unless you know it. So here, the only thing we have is a right triangle. Now, what have we learned besides special right triangles? Pythagorean theorem. Is it possible for me, with that given information, to figure out what H is? Yeah, yeah of course it is. So you can say 3 squared equals 8 squared plus 2 squared. So we can call h the square root of 5. And we'll leave it as an exact answer, unless they're asking us to um, obviously find it in our dimensions that we'd use our calculator. But just for right now, I'll just leave it as that as our area. Okay? Does that make sense? Do you guys see how I'm hiding? Do you guys see how we hide the dimensions of the height and the base to make these problems?